first. I had a chance to sit down with Lori Smith and her daughter Emily in a very raw, emotional and honest interview. They opened up about how everything unfolded that unthinkable night and what they've been doing to get through every day since. I wear that all the time. Lori Smith wears her husband's and son's favorite colors on her wrist and their ashes around her neck. This is how I reach out and touch them. It's the closest they'll ever get. February 20th, 2016, her husband Rich and son Tyler were looking at a truck at Sealy Automotive when police say Jason Dalton gunned them down. I remember for months after it happened, I couldn't go out at night. I couldn't go to dealerships. I still don't go to dealerships at night. Emily would have been with her dad and brother that night, but she stayed behind at her apartment, not feeling well. I was supposed to go with them. I was supposed to be with them. <laughs> and I woke up to my mom screaming. Lori was out that night when a friend warned her about a man randomly shooting people in Kalamazoo. And she's like, well, do you think that we should let Emily know? And I'm like, no, she's in her apartment. She's probably sleeping. But then came texts from her twin sister asking if Rich and Tyler were OK. Word of the random shooter was spreading on social media. Lori went home just to make sure everything was all right. She knew instantly it wasn't. It wasn't until I opened up the door to our bedroom and my husband wasn't there and I saw his cell phone charger on the nightstand and then I knew right then I flashed back to what I had seen on Facebook. In the blink of an eye, half of their family was gone. He was my baby brother and I was supposed to protect him. <sighs> I just couldn't believe it. And I still can't. I still can't. I don't want it to be true. I don't want it to be them. I don't want it to be anyone, but like, you start thinking, what did I do to deserve this? I don't like the nighttime. I, it's just like for the first week after, it's just like every time it got dark, I just fell apart even more so than during the day because it's just like the nighttime resembled everything that had happened. It's been one year, a wedding anniversary, Tyler's 18th birthday. He would have graduated high school. He was getting good grades and I was so proud of him and looking forward to him graduating and going on. And becoming a man and having a family and children and all those things. But then to go through that loss and not have Rich there, because Rich was always there. He was always there for me. He was always there to comfort me and tell me that everything was going to be okay. Emily had to spend the day she's dreamed of since she was 10 years old without her dad and brother her wedding day. No father-daughter dance, her dad wasn't there to give her away, and her brother wasn't there to step in. I tried to incorporate them in my, in my wedding as much as possible. I, um, I did not walk down the aisle with anyone else. I uh, walked by myself, and I carried my dad's, my dad and my brother's urn. Every moment of every day, they're missing out. From the time I wake up and normally would have gotten my son up to go to school to texting my husband throughout the day. It's been a year of learning how to live life after incredible loss, how to move forward, and how to cope. I try not to think about them, which hurts even worse, because then I feel like I'm trying to forget them, but I'm not. I just, it hurts too much to think about them. And I'm just doing this thing every day and living, and they're like, gonna come back. Um, and for some reason, I feel that after a year, um, 
I'm going to have to face reality that they aren't. So much pain for one family. I also asked them what they had to say about the man accused in all of this. For the first time, we'll hear their thoughts on Jason Dalton tonight at 11.